Hey everyone, welcome to Rebuilding the Wraith. Alright, so how this all began is that uh, a while back, uh, oh, about a year ago, um, I was running this and we had like a bunch of rain and uh, I submerged the whole truck and I did something that probably I have preached about and everybody else is that whenever you submerge your truck you need to take it apart, do your maintenance um, and uh, show you what happens when you don't do your maintenance is that you end up breaking the axle right off like that alright so <clears throat> this uh, this had become uh, very stiff um, the bearings are right now are like really rough so my fault for this okay um, I should have done what I always say I should do you know everyone should do uh, what all these other youtubers say you should do um, take care of your bearings greasy bearings um, anyway you know even the diff carrier right here feels rough and it's actually got quite a bit of resistance right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out um, these axles I got <clears throat> this one here actually you can see here the bearing is stuck in here because of the rust right um, so we're going to change out the axles, we're going to put in these, which are an actual universal joint instead of a diff cup with a pin, All right? So this is made by Axel, Axial, I'm sorry, uh, it's AX30780, if anybody wants to try it. Um, there are other, uh, other axles out there, probably better ones, you know, you got the Vanquish stuff. Um, you got the RC four-wheel drive stuff, uh, a lot more expensive. Um, actually, got these, uh, you know, pretty decent price. I think it was like twelve bucks, you know. And uh, it's better than the stock. This is a, a axial upgrade part, so uh, we'll see how it holds up. All right. So since I got <clears throat> all this apart, you can see that there hasn't been. Uh, there's no rust in here really, um, but you can see where how the grease is all turned gray well that's just like this is the stock lube you know it not very much of it and like I said it's very difficult to turn so um, I mean not extremely difficult but difficult enough where it cause enough drag to uh, cause a problem so today we're gonna go through uh, rebuilding the front differential and uh, and when it comes to the rear, the rear is a, a lot more simple, um, meaning that it doesn't have the spindles or the C-hub right here. Um, it's just a straight axle. So we're going to go over the front one. The rear one should be pretty, pretty much self-explanatory. And uh, so for now, uh, I'm going to work on getting this bearing out, and then we'll go to the other side. All right? Okay, so what I had to do in order to get this axle out, I basically uh, clamped it with a vice grip, stuck it, stuck the axle in the vice, and I had to beat it out. So that's how bad that was. Okay, and uh, it was stuck in there really good. It took about three, four wax just to get it out where it really, you know, it should be in there snug, but um, not that snug. So let's check this bearing. Just slip it on here a little bit. It doesn't feel that bad, but I have uh, a whole new set of bearings from uh, Fast Eddie. I've heard uh, a lot of good reviews about these bearings, so <clears throat> we're going to replace them. Replace the stock bearing right here with the Fast Eddie bearings. Let's we'll see what happens. And then we're going to probably, when I go to assemble this all together again, I'm going to use my old trick with the uh, chain lube um, because it seems to work really well. So, anyway, uh, so let's take this other side apart. So, we got two screws right here one at the top, one at the bottom. They're slotted. If you can see on this side, 
you got basically a, a splined end um, which when you uh, when you go to put the C hub or the C hub on um, you can set it at uh, where you, how you want so you can actually um, turn the differential you can give it different different angles um, I haven't actually played with that before um, this truck here has actually been pretty much trouble free except for uh, you know the part where it was my fault so we'll get this other screw off and then we'll see about see how this axle comes apart is it going to fight us or is it just going to come apart this is not the broken one now what I'm going to do somebody may ask what am I going to do with the old one well I never throw anything away um, reason being is that uh, there's always a time where I may need something off of something to make something work right so I won't ever throw it away okay so same thing on the other side where uh, it was stuck in the housing um, you can see I don't know if you all can see this but a little bit of rust around the outer edge of it um, checking the bearing itself okay that part feels smooth it'd probably be okay to use as a spare all right so <clears throat> I'll put that aside with the other one where I put it there it is I'll just put these in what I call a uh, the carnage bucket, right? So just remove these clamps right here. You can see them right here. These two clamps. Just like on a, a full size rig. Or we call them like a bearing cap. I guess you'd call that on this too. But you remove them. And then the whole diff carrier should come out. All right. See, there's one cap. Let's pop this other one out of here. Unless it's stuck. Nope, there we go. So this whole thing is exposed and you can just pull it right out of there. Okay, so I know I said I was uh, just going to do the front differential, but I ran into a problem with the front differential that I thought everyone would like to, you know, uh, at least maybe have my take on. Um, and that is the the pin for these MIP drive shafts uh, it's it's been a complaint for quite a while from a lot of people um, that they round out real easy and they get stuck and um, what I had to do with the front differential is I had to uh, heat it up to uh, get it out um, and it was pretty well stripped um, before that but the heat um, actually made everything come loose uh, I don't know if it was a combination of the Loctite um, in there or just rust from when I dunked this thing underwater. Yeah, which, by the way, it made a pretty good submarine. Um, <clears throat> however, I didn't take care of it. So that's why we're here, right? Now, the rear differential, everything seems to spin real freely. You know, unlike the front. Um, the front, I had one set of bearings um, on this spindle here that were... Uh, pretty well seized up so um, that's another good reason why I do your maintenance especially if you can do something like play in the water um, if you're in the snow area you know blow them off uh, spray them spray them down with uh, any kind of lube anything to protect it um, you know, whether it be W40 or, or uh, you know anything like that all right <clears throat> Okay, so these two screws right here holding this bracket on, they have to come out in order for the axle to come out. So there is not a bearing in there. I checked the instructions. Um, what comes with the truck is really incredible. Um, they do a really good job. I mean, the instructions are just like if you were building a kit. 
So, oh, I took that one out. <clears throat> we'll take these out here. Now, what I'm going to do when I get the axles out of here is I'm just going to put these screws back in so I know where they go. There we are. Just like that. Okay, so I'll just put these screws back in real quick. I guess these are kind of a cool thing because, I mean, it helps uh, retain the axle so they don't go flying completely off. I, mean, I, I hate that on full scale, full scale stuff. Um, makes one heck of a mess. Okay, I'm not tightening these down all the way. I'm just starting them. Okay, all right, so there we are. Now, <clears throat> I just need to pop these bearings out of here. All right, the other direction. Okay, so these are all apart. And uh, next thing I'll tell you is uh, how I clean my parts, okay? How I clean my parts is I have, I used to have this hobby that I did. Um, the ammunition reloading and I bought this um, Isonic Sonic cleaner um, just for cleaning my casings because it worked really well um, but anyway you can use this to clean your RC parts too so you just take the lid off like so stick it in here like that we'll stick the differential cover in there we try to wipe off the excess uh, grease I mean, it does a great job, but try to wipe them off. Let me just grab uh, another rag. Okay, so uh, I'll just take a rag right here, and you can see where, you know, where the grease is running right there. I'll just wipe this out. I mean, it will clean that, but it'll do a much better job if you wipe off as much of the excess as possible. Okay, so i got that differential cover. I'm going to do this um, ring gear carrier unit get as much of that off as possible okay still need to pop these bearings off like, like that All right. this, this one's coming apart pretty easy the other one didn't well, maybe I spoke too soon oh there we go Alright, so I just throw this in here, and uh, this is a locked carrier anyway, so I'm not going to bother pulling it apart really. Um, just see if I've missed any big clumps right here. There's some grass. Yeah, it'll take the grass off too. Alright, so I'll just dump that in there. <clears throat> now this has got a heater in it, so it's going to be... Warm water, like right now, it's pretty warm. Uh, the heater's still on. So, I'll just put the cover on. And set it. At the, oops, highest setting. Okay, push on. And it's clean. You know, in the meantime, while this is doing this thing, I will focus on getting that, uh, drive shaft out of, the, out of the pinion. All right, so drive shaft and the pinion. I use uh, one of those little mini torches for that. Um, only thing is you gotta be really careful because you can melt this plastic real quick. Um, I mean, these get like 1200 degrees and if it ain't gonna come out 1200 degrees, it probably isn't. On the full scale, I would call that the uh, fire wrench. It used to be like one of my favorite things. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but it was. All right. So let me go grab that torch. So anyway, these torches are pretty versatile. 
Um, this one right here, I've had this for over 30 years. The only reason why I swapped it out for a new one, this one, is because the igniter doesn't always work on this one. But, uh, you know, it lasts a long time. They're refillable. And uh, let's see if it'll light today. See? Hey, there we go. Alright, so, so then what we do, what I'm going to do this time, try to focus the heat where that pin is. What I did yesterday is once the plastic was starting to look like it was starting to melt a little bit, took the heat away like this one's doing right now. Alright, so in the end, <clears throat> I ended up having to cut this. Um, good thing MIP makes rebuild kits for these, so I can get just the end right here and replace it. Uh, once I get <clears throat> the transmission apart, I take the drive lines off that, they don't know exactly how many parts I'm going to need. So, I got that off. Uh, so, what we got left now is uh, just a pinion. Luckily, I didn't hurt anything here when I had to cut it off. I used a rotary tool to do that. Um, so, we just push that out like we did before. Right? Oh, I got one of the bearings came with it. So, that feels good. Pop this outer one out. Oh, falls out. This one I nicked with the rotary tool right here. Um, so I, I most likely trash that. Okay? So, anyway, so we just uh, go ahead and, like I said before, just wipe off the any excess um, oil or grease you have. Uh, we'll stick it in that Sonic cleaner. They sure didn't put much grease in here. That's for sure. But hey, you know, you buy a ready-to-run vehicle, a person does think that they shouldn't have to uh, take it completely down and re-lube and... I mean, I could see uh, loose screws here and there, but... Anyway, so we just take this, stick in our little cleaner over here, And get it going. Okay, so in the end result, this is what you get. Extremely clean. I mean, it's like brand new. Except for the road rash from the bottom. That's how we'll know where the bottom is, right? If it wasn't for this. Um, the spindle hubs. C hubs. Cover. And you've seen this already. So, I mean, that's looking really good. Pretty effortless. Uh, only thing is, is that when you set it out, you know, I, I set it out on a towel to dry, or when you got your little uh, hat, hat bushings right here. Um, they want to be a little rusty on you. So, I don't know, it's, it's a matter of uh, what you'd like, you know, preference. Uh, you can just dry these off right away, put some oil on them, or leave them like that, let them dry, but, you know, these already had some rust going on it. Just, uh, got a little bit more now. And when I go to put this back together, um, I'm going to lubricate everything, so. Alright? Alright, so we're going to let the rear differential, uh, get all cleaned up, and, uh, we'll go and put everything back together, uh, when I get back. Okay, so we're going to start assembling the front differential, uh, like I said before. We've got this all cleaned up. Um, I used my Sonic cleaner to clean it. It did a really good job. Um, looks like brand new inside, right? So, uh, with that, we're going to get a couple items. Uh, one being my grease and my uh, chain lube, which has not yet failed me. But uh, I just feel that the combination of the two work really well together. So let me just go grab that real quick and we'll get it put together. <clears throat> All 
All right, so what I'm using uh, is this blaster chain lube right here. Uh, you can get it at any vial parts store. You can get it any brand you want. Um, you know, if you want to spend a little bit more money, you can uh, always go to like a motorcycle shop and get something there. All right. Uh, and then otherwise, otherwise, you know, it's just some run-of-the-mill uh, high temp brake disc grease. I uh, got this at all parts store as well. So um, that that's kind of what I like to use. I don't like to use marine grease because it's just way too thick and creates too much resistance. It doesn't get real cold here. You know, marine grease probably would work fine because it wouldn't get really sticky. Um, actually, when temperatures uh, are 100 plus in the summertime here, it most likely will work really well. Um, this stuff may, you know, seep out of the, um, this stuff here may seep out of any cracks, crevices that you have going on, maybe the diff cover um, at one point, but, uh, you know, if we're doing our maintenance, we're gonna take it apart and do it again and again anyway, make sure everything's clean, right? All right, so let's get, to get, get going on it. Um, like I said before, um, I'm going to be using these Fast Eddy bearings. I haven't used these before, but I've uh, read great things about it, so I guess we'll see how they hold up. And uh, kind of a cool thing, I guess, maybe to keep your bearings fresh as they come in a Ziploc bag. It really zip. There we go. But the bag ain't so great, but. Ziploc works really good. All right. And I guess they had to cut corners somewhere, right? I'm going to just roll all these out. Make sure that bag's empty. Lay these all down. I'll organize these in sizes. Looks like there's only a few sizes for this rig. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to check and see what bearings fit what. I think these go on the hair. I like so. Right? And, yeah. Actually, I could leave that on there because that would go right in through here. I feel we've done any kind of differential work before. It should be pretty self-explanatory. I like that, right? And it's been a nice and smooth and free so far. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So. Okay. So we have the differential. Um, I like to refer back to the owner's manual that I got with the vehicle uh, just to make sure that I'm getting it right. So um, we don't want to, like I've said before, don't want to end up putting everything together and having a dang thing run backwards on you. So, um, so, so two of these are larger bearings go, do go on the differential carrier. And they go on rather tight. Okay. Just like that and another one on the other side okay nice and smooth all right so according to the instruction when you put in the uh, differential the I mean the, the carrier into the housing you actually uh, want the, the ring side towards the long long part right here hold this no. okay for you guys this would be up right so we want it sitting in kind of like that, right? And we still want it to spin freely, and this is where our grease comes in. So I'm going to pop this out right, real quick here, and just take some of that, stick it down in there. Go and go around the ring gear with some. I did notice uh, this was an RTR to begin with. Wraiths don't come in the kit. That uh, there wasn't a whole lot of grease in here. The other thing is that you know working with some other uh, brands that I have noticed at this spring and and pinion are pretty beefy to begin with so alright so let me just go ahead and slide this back down in there wipe my hands off first I know I should be wearing gloves but I don't know kind of a habit I've done over the years and I'm paying for it now I'm sure <clears throat> alright right down in there 
work it around a little bit. Okay. Take my chain lube, spray it down inside. And get it everywhere. Let that settle a bit. And it's going to leak out. It's just one of those things. This chain lube does dry on, on stuff, so I mean otherwise it would just fling off a chain, right? Like right away. Alright. <clears throat> Set that up like that. Or like that or like that. How about if I just do this? Take a tire. Or something. Put it on each side. Axle out of the way. Something like that, right? <clears throat> I guess this way I can work on the uh, uh, what I like to call would be in the full scale world uh, bearing caps. Should be these. Okay. So we want the flat end up against where the bearing is. Something like that. And then another one. You can see on this side of it that uh, there's like a cup that kind of holds the, you know, well, the bearing isn't going anywhere anyway, but it kind of keeps that bearing in place. Okay. Something like that. Then I got uh, four four screws, which in the uh, full size world we would call uh, you know cap screws. Screw them back down in there. You notice I'm not using my uh, drill driver right now because I don't want to over tighten anything. Ah. Okay, I'm just going to run these down real quick. Not going to tighten them up all the way yet, not until we get all of them in. And I'll tighten them all equally, kind of like what we would do on a full size, full scale. Except we don't have torque specs, basically, just don't over tighten it. Since it's a metal screw going into plastic here again, okay? Let's do by feel and try to get it even. Because you wouldn't want one side popping up, sticking up more than the other. Okay, so here we are. We got all nice and now that is smooth. I know you guys can't tell, but trust me, it's smooth. All right. Okay, so <clears throat> at this point, we're gonna put the the diff cover on because we don't need to have the diff cover off in order to put the axles together. So we'll stick that on there. I got these really small screws here. Get my correct driver here. We went off uh, running these on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, uh, my wife's uncle's house, and uh, had a real good time. I brought one of my drivers with me, and I'll be darned if I can't find it. Anyways, that's always fun. And here again, I'm not using any power tools, so I'm doing this all by hand. Okay. I'm going to put these screws in in opposite corners. Now I know. In my past videos, I've said I always leave one loose, but this all fits in um, like in a notch, so I'm not needing to do that in this case. Oh. 
all the holes should line up. If they didn't line up, then it must have done something wrong. Okay, almost there. Last screw. All right, so there you are. Okay, now I can stick uh, these axles in. Where to put the little one? There it is. Little one goes here. I like that. Now, there's uh, this doesn't normally go in this far because you're gonna have your C hub and uh, knuckles right there so but anyway let's uh, show you all how it fits in there kind of like that and it's spinning so much more freely now than it did before okay all right so <clears throat> another thing i uh noticed about the owner's manual is good to keep good thing to keep is um when you go to put the c hubs back on if there's a longer side and a shorter side. Okay, so I'm showing this to you right now, upside down. Okay. Um, according to the picture, the longer side goes on the bottom, so there'll be a left and a right. Right? So, so this would be for this side looking like, and it would just fit in like so. <clears throat> However, there is no bearing in here as, as well, like I, like I was saying. So I can go ahead and just slide these on. And for the purpose of showing you how these go together, um, I'm going to put them together. Um, but I will be getting some different, uh, different C-hubs and different spindles. I'm going to get some aluminum ones for this car. Um, so just make sure, you know, since these are notched, that you have them in the right spot. You can see where the screw was before, right? And I got one upside down. Now see, <clears throat> what I mean by upside down is, see how the long side is on the top? And this one's got the long side at the bottom. Alright, so I just need to pull this one back off. Flip it upside down. There. I like that. Now if you find yourself with your camber off, then you know you've got them upside down. Uh, if you don't have your book, uh, before you go uh, complaining to anyone aftermarket about that, um, which I read a view, review on the other day, and, after uh, going through this book before I reassembled it, um, I understood that this guy did not know really what was going on, um, what you really had to do. All right. So, <clears throat> like I say, I'm going to replace uh, these spindles as well. And you can see this one. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it's damaged. Um, but just for the sake of uh, assembly, um, I'm going to. Uh, Put these together and uh, go from there. All right, so we stick a bearing on the outside. All right, so we'll stick this outer bearing in like that. Inner bearing in. Hopefully like that. I'm noticing this one goes in quite a ways farther.
And then put this in like that. Okay. See? See, since we have damage to the other side, it won't go in all the way. So I guess what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold off on putting these knuckles together. And I'm not gonna put this well, I'm gonna start the screws in here just because I don't want to lose them. Um and then when the new ones come in, uh, we'll switch them out for the new ones. Okay. But anyway, and we go together something like that. Actually, something like that. If you don't put it together correctly, um, your camber is going to be off. So according to this faces the back so unless I have this upside down which I may I may have it upside down I would throw my camber way off so that's probably why we don't go and tighten stuff down right away let's see maybe I misread it try that again okay this goes like that Axle goes into the notch. Oops, come on, come on. Axle goes into the notch on the differential. Okay. So now, if everything's put together like it's supposed to be, it should be right about, just about right. Just about right. If everything's put together like it's supposed to be, it should be something like that. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to take and pull this out. I'm going to put these these hat bushings in here again that's just because I don't want to lose them and I'll just start the screws in there okay These go kind of like that. I take these logger screws and I put those in. I'm just starting them enough. So I won't lose this screw. The reason why the, the hat collar side of these bushings go on the inside is that way if a screw falls out, at least you don't lose the bushing. I mean, you can buy new bushings, but I'd much rather throw another screw in than to go looking all over trying to find that bushing again. Okay. Alright, so something like that. basically put together it's still spinning really nice and free okay all right now, even though I do not have the new ones I want to make sure this is going to go right Pushing these bearings down in there. I'll put my hat bushings in first. Okay. Axle in here. It fits right now. Turn that axle a little bit to get the line up in the differential. There we go. So 
some things like to cooperate some things do not there we go put our screws in Try to get them lined up. Okay, just started, like I said. This side. Just started. Okay. There we are. Man, I tell you. That is better than brand new. Now, some of you may wonder, why don't you just go ahead and change um, the whole housing? And I'm thinking, why? Um, the housing itself is fine. Um, the only reason why I would change the whole housing right now would be to add more weight to the bottom end of the truck. And if I did that, <coughs> I'd probably go with like a beef tube version. Oh, they have the brass tubes inside here because um, uh, you know you stick brass tubes in here and really these little trucks do have you know you can put quite a bit of power to them but with the bushing you know with the new C hubs and spindles and if you run a beef tube differential um, you're gonna have all kinds of weight down low right uh, if you need any more than that you'll probably want to put wheel weights on the outside so um, now that's kind of the goal here is to get the you know I I didn't have very many fast trucks at the time and then I went and broke my wife's truck so I'm rebuilding it for her. it's gonna be a special commemorative truck uh, so um, she was in Desert Storm so I got a whole wrap and all that that's gonna go on it well when we're all done um, should be quite a gift for her. and I'll tell her I'll leave it alone because I have my own right and even though I tried to not lose screw well maybe I didn't I uh, seems like I've uh, lost the bottom one here which it doesn't need to have but that leaves you with a hole where water can get in and you don't want that All right, so there we are. Everything is slightly put together. Um, when the new parts come in, I will uh, run that, run through that with you, and uh, and hopefully you like this video. The rear differential is the same. If you want to see how that goes together, just leave me a you know a comment in the comment section. I can do that for you. It's not a big deal. Um, my other screws probably are. Right. There's one. This is what happens when you're not organized. No, that's for the other one. Anyway, um, if I don't find them, I have some extras. Um, that's another good thing I recommend is I'll you know go get yourself a box of those uh, RC screws, assortment of screws, um, because that saved my tail so many times. I tell you. All right. So anyway, I hope you like what you've seen. Um, Give me a like, click, uh, subscribe. Um, there'll be more. Thank you.